going to try something a little bit different today. But first, thanks to my patrons. Guys, um, you'll win every argument we ever have. So, it's definitely why. <laughs> Like, seriously, in the, like, in the comments, please let me know. Like, what kind of things do people offer to patrons? I don't even know. Like, I'm not sure what it is I have to offer more than what I'm already offering. So, I don't know. Let me know. I'm not sure. So, here's the plan, okay? On one side of the table, I have Big Wah. And on the other side of the table, I have an Iron Jaws list. And I'm going to try to play them against each other. So, here's a Big Wah list that I'm going to be playing in an upcoming league. It is, um, I think... Um, I've seen a few different big wild lists out there, and I think that there's a lot of uh, play right now, for sure. I think that with the changes, with the points decreases from Art Boys, I think that with the point, points decreases from the Big Pigs, I think there's lots of options right now. So here is what I am playing. I always, the last big wild that I played in a league, I really enjoyed playing like the 2 times 10 Get Rippers and then the Reinforced Unit of Brutes. I feel like it's just a lot of uh, feet. It is very good at being castly. I also like playing a mega boss on foot with destroyer, like just more damage, doubling the commands. I have a wargog and a uh, weird knob, and then double uh, war chanter because I'm playing so many iron jaw units. Then I have these little ripa snarl fangs. These are not the right base sizes, but this is the best that I could find, and so I feel like the base sizes are quite small. They're 25. They're 25 by 50, so I feel like what like it's, it's fine for playtesting purposes. Gobstrack, uh, Ma Grunta, right, being 160 points, it, it just fits into the list. So this is, um, yeah, this is it. This is the list. I am hopeful that it's going to do well. And on the other side of the table, we have an Iron Jaws list. So this is two Reinforced Unit of Pigs, a Reinforced Unit of Brutes, two War Chanters, a single unit of Gorgruntas, and then two Weird Nub Shamans. One is the general, I guess I should somehow differentiate them. One is the general with um, Master of Magic and the great big green hand of Gork, and the other one is uh, has Hoarfrost. So I decided to go for Master of Magic over um, Shaman of the Chilled Lands, and I'm still kind of unsure about this decision. I'm still kind of unsure about this decision. The reason that I like the Master of Magic is I, I value the teleport, and I want to make sure it goes off. So, I don't know. Shaman of the Chill Lands is good, but I, I think that the way that I'm going to play this list is I'm going to keep my Shaman really far back, so I don't think that Blizzard is going to be... Like, I'm going to be really aggressive with pigs, so I, I don't think that it's going to be um, super, uh, super whatever. So we're playing around a map, so we're going to play the Ice Fields. So... Um, when you make a charge roll for a unit, roll each die that shows, for each dice that shows one before modifiers are applied, the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. Okay, so disadvantage to charging, that's fine. Here this is eight, so eight, cool. So, um, ooh, we're deploying left and right. That's cool, and we're nine inches from the middle, so this, is, I was gonna say, is a 13 inch deployment zone. But it's not. Crazy, deep deployment zone here. I wonder why this thing is here. Whatever, we can ignore this. So let's look at some terrain. How about we just go like, we'll try this one. Sure. That'll do. So we're gonna start by rolling off to see who gets to go first. So, um, can I take dice from this side and bring them over here? That might be cool. So Big Wah gets a three and Iron Jaws roll a six. So the Iron Jaws list is a two drop and the Big Wah is a many drop. So the Iron Jaws player says that the Big Wah player has to deploy first because it doesn't really make a big difference. So we're gonna start by taking our unit of Ripa's Snarl Fanks and they are going to come on the flank somewhere to help zone out. So Big Wah is the blue player. Okay, so I know from the Iron Jaws player that they can go nine and then nine again and then charge, which means that from the deployment zone, 25 inches is a seven inch charge. So I think I want to deploy quite far back. This is a seven inch. So let's say 30 inches is, a, is 12 inches. 
So I think I want to take this objective. Right? But I was saying this before, that you kind of can make your own deployment zone. So I think I want to stay... They can also 3d6 charge, too. So this is slightly further than they could get me turn one. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to just deploy... We're going to deploy far back. And we're going to see how that plays out. So I'm going to deploy behind this line to try to stay as safe as possible. Unless I want to stick my flankers up somewhere. So control one, control... There's no way that I'm going to be... So for him to get control one, control two, control more... He's going to have to take an objective from me if I control all three. And that does not seem difficult at all. So I don't think I value that. I think I want to take my Rippa Snarl Fangs. And I want to just stick them off to the side. We're also concerned about a teleport in the back line. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm just going to take my Rippas and I'm going to stick them nine inches. I can do a little bit more, right? Because he has to fit the actual unit into the corner. And we're just going to take them behind our line and we're going to stick them like about out here. So we're going to try to zone out teleports out to here. Does that seem good enough? Because where? Because he can come, like... I'll probably have units over here. Maybe these guys would be better a little bit further up. Jeez, this game is difficult. Like, if I have him here, it's like I'm going to zone out there. And then I'm going to zone out a little bit further this way, too. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. Cool. Iron Jaws turn. So for Iron Jaws, we like to deploy uh, pigs. Let's see, how should I deploy these guys? In what order? Um, the Weird Knob General teleport should hit the table pretty early. So why don't we do the same and just start with some flankers? And then we're going to play this pretty aggressively. So we're going to just stick a unit of... Gorgrunt is over here on the side. Could we get wholly within six of this of the corner here? Let's set up as if we're gonna surround and destroy. I think it's probably as good as we, we're gonna get. Let's just say that it's wholly within six of the battlefield edge. I don't think it quite is. I'm not even sure if it's, they mathematically can. But maybe not. But good enough. So we're two drop. So what are the two drops again? Let me have a look. Um, so it's like, right. So it's it's one, two, three. And then it's um, one, two, three. So these are the two drops. So we're just going to drop down some more channers because they have quite a good range. And they get to move before they do their beats. And we don't care about fixing bean on turn one. So probably just stick them like right here and right here. Maybe not behind the terrain. They're probably both going up the middle. Actually, you know what? They're probably fine right here. I know that the big wall list doesn't have any shooting. Okay, so that's drop one from Iron Jaws. So back to Cruel Boys, or um, to Big Wah. So we're going to take our other flank, which is our Magrenta, and we're going to stick that out on the battlefield somewhere. I think maybe I might try to stick it more in this corner. I don't want them to get to me. So what if we just stick it back like this and try to zone out... So I'll probably have some Ard Boys 
here on the front, maybe like here and here. I'm really going to cast a lot. So maybe if I put the Gorgrunta all the way over here, it's going to help me just keep it. Like he can't get me unless I teleport. So then what am I thinking for this army here? I'm thinking like a um, couple of units of Ard Boys on the front and then just everything in the back. So like Ard Boys, Ard Boys, maybe like Brutes and then the rest of the castle in here. Okay, so I'm not sure how I feel about this pig on the side, but we'll stick with it. Okay, pass turn. So then it's the rest of the Iron Jaws deployment. So we'll probably stick one unit of pigs up like this. Probably going to stick a second unit of pigs like this. Going to make sure that both our units of pigs are within Horfrost range and within Teleport range. And they are wholly outside of 30. Because, like, do I want to bait my opponent into putting something in the front? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I don't care about being far back. No, I do a little bit. Hmm. But I think this is probably good. We're going to get these guys as far back as they can possibly go. And still be. Can I get them outside of 30? I mean, pretty close. far back can they really go before they're at a 30? Because I have control, right? And so I'm probably choosing to go second. So I would love for my opponent to have to move forward to do magical dominance on me. So we're just going to do like this. I should probably color these units into different colors. Not bad. I don't have ad blocker. There we go. Okay, so we got blue, we got red, and then we got brown or whatever. So this red one is still out of range. So maybe we just slide these guys over like this and stick the red guy back here. It looks pretty good. Slide these guys forward, and I think these two are going to just come over into the back over here. Just so they don't get caught up on the terrain. That seems fine. Cool. And then Brutes are going to do the same thing. Maybe the Brutes should just get set up over here. I'm playing against Big Wah. So, do I care about teleporting the Brutes? I mean, I could. But I think that they're okay just to walk. So I think, you know what? I think we're just going to stick them over here. Stick them up here on the line. Sure. That sounds fine. And then last, Mega Boss on Ma Crusher. Big old cabbage. Probably going to sit in the back here. Keep them relatively safe. Um, big Walk can also teleport, so I'm just going to like zone out the back with my big old base and I think we're good um, yeah got my stuff it all looks good and in range I'm not going to teleport the uh, Maw Crusher at the start cool and then big wad deploys so let's get my uh, unit of art boys here maybe we'll slide them over like this Let's get a unit of Ard Boys here. Same deal. Screened out a little bit. So my whole back line should be nice and zoned out. The Brutes probably go about here. Unit of Pigs going here. Mega Boss going in the middle behind this piece of terrain. Seems okay. Um, 
we're gonna have a hard time fitting Gobby's Brack in, in such a tight spot in the back. Maybe Gobby goes over here. I I know that I'm not gonna be within unbind range, right? Like I could try to put Gobby's Brack forward somewhere, but I don't think that. Let's change this to uh, 30. I don't know why it's set to that. Like, I just really don't think, this is 30 inches, right? And I, I've decided to deploy back really far. So for me to be with an unbind range, I'd have to be forward all the way up to like here. And that's not happening. So maybe we'll just stick Gobsprack in the back right here. Can you fit, buddy? Oh yeah, no problem. And then we just got our little foot heroes in the back. So I kind of, so the, like, I can't move Rippas and I can't move the Tusk boss or the um, Gorg Mogranta, but I can move everything else. So if I need to shuffle things around, I can. So we'll just put the War Chanters up like this. One's on the left, one's on the right. We want a Hoarfrost targets pigs. And then we want to teleport brutes and gore gruntas. so we'll just slide the brutes over just a little bit right our rippas are zoning out this side okay so that looks good to me so that's deployment very interesting map because of how um far of how the um you know it's left and right and how deep the deployment zone is right like i know that i can i can sort of confidently stay outside of range here so the iron jaws player gets to decide who's going first here and i think that based on these deployments i would think that it would be i would that the iron jaws player would make the big wild player go first okay so let's go first uh big wild player i'm just gonna pull up my notes here real quick I'm gonna try to do this fast too. Big wah notes. Cool. Okay, so command points. So this player, the big wall player gets two, and the iron jaws player gets three. I'm gonna roll my wall points. Um, D6 plus three, so eight. Good roll. Which I know I can change this. I just literally changed it. Wow, points. Cool. D6 plus 3. Um, let's roll for primals. So I generate us a global. So we're just going to use these primals. And then let's see if I generate myself one. I do. So 2 to 1. Um, optimal focus. So let's say that the the weird knob general is going to get an extra cast so just looks like probably a mystic shield cast so we're going to mark that with this i guess optimal focus cool uh no rally no endless spells no work arc profit heroic action here we go here we go here we go get one more wall point bring us to nine and pick pick a battle tactic i'm going to pick magical dominance magical dominance cool um iron jaws player so the Iron Jaws player is going to uh, roll a Primal Die and generate another, glo another global. Oh. oh, I cleared all the dice. So that's probably why. Let's probably move them up here. So Iron Jaws player has two and the Big Wall player has three Primal Dice. That's totally fine. And then their battle tactic uh, or their com or, uh, heroic action, probably just generate a command point. I don't think there's a, any sense in doing anything else. So, yep, so we get a command point, and then I know that there's a nice thing for that. I do not see anything. So let's just use, like, I don't know, how about a strategist one? So we're going to give it to the mega boss on Makrusha, because he gets to issue his commands twice or three times. And I made sure that I'm kind of nicely within a lot of different things to pick there. Or this is score track, that's cool. Cool, so then let's start with the first turn. So my plan here is, I think I'm, I wanna try to like strike out trade pigs with my pigs. I wanna charge into them and blow them up and take this objective. So I'm gonna control one, con 
I have to control uh, four objectives. Or no, I have to control three objectives to take it. So if I control one, control two, and then control three, right? So then I can take it. So if I, if I teleport myself in here, then I'm going to be able to hit and uh, probably and definitely take the objective. And then the Mog Gruntagauja is going to run up to here and take this side. Because if I fail this, if I fail this charge, because it is a nine inch charge, right? So if I fail it, um, I can take this really easily with Rippa's. I can take this really easily. And then I think the Gouger can come up and stick himself like sideways. And then I can zone out the back line and just with Gobsprack and just and probably maybe move him forward a little bit and put the Gouger in a position right here to force something to come in at me. And I'll just try to make sure I'm out of range of the Brutes. And then the Ard Boys can stick up in the middle. The Ard Boys can stick up on this side. The Brutes can move up. The Castle can sort of just move up the, in the middle and I'll make sure that my back line is all zoned out. Maybe, yeah. So that's that's kind of my plan. Again, it's a really good idea to have like a full plan, full idea of, of what you're going to do. So then if I fail this charge, um, control one, control two, control more, I'm going to need a plan B. I'm going to need a third objective to get five points. So what is that? What's my plan B? How many feet do we have on this objective? One, two, three, four. So plan B could be Mog run to Gouja moves up to here. So uh, he moves, nope, he moves nine. No. Uh, Mog run to Gouger, where is he? Mog run to Gouger. Uh, he moves nine at the top of his table. So that's 15 if I auto run him. So not even close. So what's my plan B? If he mighty destroyers, he's probably not within he's not within range for mighty destroyers. Because then he could go 18 and he could go 24, still not enough. I guess I'm just gonna have to make sure I get that teleport off. I'm outside of 30. So I don't really have a good plan B here. I don't really have a good plan B. So my I have to get my teleport off. I'm gonna value that really highly. Okay, so that's my plan. So then let's throw out War Chanter buffs. So the we're gonna throw out one War Chanter buff. I guess I can actually just use uh, plus one damage. No, not there. I wanted, I wanted to delete you. So, plus one damage. Uh, we're going to give one to the pigs from this guy. And then we're going to give one to... Maybe just this unit of Ard Boys. And they'll just sit in the front. Right, because we're going to get pigged. We're going to get pigged. So the Ard Boys are going to try to take this position on this line. And try to zone them out. So they'll they'll take that as a thing. Okay, so damage goes out, no fix and beat. So let's cast some spells. So let's start with the weird knob shaman and uh, hoarfrost. Um, I meant the wergog prophet. Oh, this is my iron jaws notes. That's why it's not making any sense. Um, I'm out of unbind range from everything, so there's just no contesting here. So, sure, let's start with, um, Wargog Prophet Mystic Shield. Cool, get that. I'm gonna give that to the Ard Boys in the front. Because they're just gonna take a big hit. I don't care about the pig so much. I'm gonna try to make him come to me. And I'm buffed up with damage. So I just don't want him breaking my castle in the front. That seems good. Okay, and then Hoarfrost. So nine. So that's enough. So we're going to pick the pigs and we're going to pick the uh, rend on the, on the thing. So it's plus one rend. I know there's a thing for that. Plus one hit, plus one wound, plus one rend on the pigs. So they are plus one damage and then their tusks and hooves have plus one rend. Cool. Let's do uh, Gobsprack. Can I hit no run? No, too far. 
Let's do a sneaky miasma on Gobsprack. Cool, he's gonna move 14 inches forward. So this is as far as he can move and I reserve the right to pull him backwards. So 30 inches, I can totally hit right in the middle of this group, but I only need to hit here. Nope, I need to hit about here. So he can move back just a few, just a couple inches. There we go. So then let's do choking mist. Uh, eight, so that goes off. So it's gonna be, so my, again, the point that I'm gonna pick is gonna be here. So I don't get him, I don't get him, but I do get the two units of pigs. So let's throw, that's a pretty good spell. I'm just gonna throw, not this wound counter. So far, I haven't had to use any of my primal dice to make sure that my stuff goes off. So we're just gonna put it out the front here. Cool. Um, and then last but not least, we have our teleport spell. Cool. So we're gonna pick up the pigs and they're gonna come in here. Nine inches away. Is this, the, is this the good spot or should they come over on this side? Yeah, I can pro I can just pile on to the objective if I if I get it. So we're nine inches away there. That's cool. Plus one damage, plus one rend. And and then I need to think if I want to do a mighty destroyer's move. Sometimes I think about like mighty destroyers, or if I think about like the run. Right. Like, do I want to use Mighty Destroyers, or do I want to auto-run them six, or do I want to do both? So, for my Art Boys to get up to here, it's going to be about 13, let's say 14 inches. So, they go 14 with an auto-run of six. Is there any reason I want a Mighty Destroyers anything else? This pig is going to have to get a good run roll. I put Gobsprack in a little bit of a compromising position, but I can also redeploy him backwards. I don't think I need a Mighty Destroyers anything. I only have two command points, so I'm going to auto run six instead. Right. And I'll probably just do the two units of Art Boys and just move them up and claim some space. I need to grab some objectives and stuff. I'm not sure what to do with Rippas. They'll probably just sit in the back. We'll see at the move. We'll see how far they can get. Cool. So I got my tactic. So I'm just going to mark that here. Uh, magical dominance is good. Okay, cool. So what well, move phase is next? Okay, let's get some movement done. Um, I guess Gobsprack can actually move back, which is good. Um, oh no, Mighty Destroyers was supposed to be here. Right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix this. So I don't go 9 here. I go 12 here. Right, of course. That's like such a bonehead thing. You go 12 here. And then I spend a CP to Mighty Destroyer in these guys. So these guys are outside of 3. Right, they're outside of 3. Right, okay, so then movement. So those guys uh, don't move, they just sit there. And there's no redeploy opportunity, there's nothing going on here. And there's probably not gonna be any redeploy opportunities. Um, I mean, it's pretty risky, but I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna spend the CP, I'm gonna run the Ard Boys and these Ard Boys. So I'm just gonna start by moving these Ard Boys. So they get to go, um, six and four is 10. So they get to go 10 inches up. Let me actually rethink this for a sec. So, I think that they get me no matter what. So it's 18 and then charge and then a 3d6 charge, right? So it's like, if, if I were to sit far back, I might stay out of reach, but I'm giving up so much space. I, I just can't do it. And so I think that Rippas are gonna zone out the back line from teleports, I think. 
So the I'm gonna move these guys the other ten. Up on the flank here, I guess. I guess. Uh Gobby is going to well let's see. I'm still outside of 30. So he can't do much. So all he's going to do is just come back and toe touch here. Because his job is going to be just to zone out some of the back line. So that seems fine. Uh, this pig here is going to run. Uh, two. So that's... What is it again at the bottom? It was nine, right? Right. His He doesn't have a monster table. He just has a momentum table. So nine plus two is 11. So he's going to go 11 inches forward. And then... He's short of the objective. Hmm. Right, because I move them. So I guess Gob doesn't move back. So here's an interesting position. So I can take this objective for five. Because nothing else is going to get there. Um, control one, control two... These Ard boys didn't get there either. They were also short of the objective. I guess this is a big problem for being so far back. Um, so Rippas can probably get there. Yeah, Rippas can get there. I really, I'm really enjoying these practice games. This, this should have been a bigger role. Interesting. So Gobby can sit here to... This is going to be a five-point turn. Oh, no. No, because he's only going to control two objectives. So I need to control three objectives. So Gobby doesn't have to. He can he can sit in the back. So he will. Do I want him to be within three? Probably not. Um, the Mega Boss is going to run, too. But he doesn't even really need to go anywhere. All I'm going to do is make sure that he's within command range of the Magranta. So he's just going to move up to here. Mm, maybe I want him to be in fighting distance behind here. No, it's probably fine. Uh, Wurgog is going to run, so he gets to go. He's five, right? So he gets to go seven. So he's just going to sort of threaten the middle. Um, let's see which war chanter is which. The green sticks is fixin'. So this guy's fixin' beat. And then this guy's get him beat. So the get him beat one is gonna run. So that's not or that's nine inches. And then before I do that, I'm gonna turn on his aura. So I can see. So it looks like I'm not gonna be able to get the other one. So I'm just gonna stick him back here. That seems fine. Um I think uh these art boys are gonna spread out a little bit though. Just to kind of cover this gap a little bit better. They're gonna get they're gonna get slapped, but that's okay because they are mystic shielded plus one damage plus one to rend when they get charged in, so they're they're gonna be okay. Um, Rippas is gonna move their twelve. They're just gonna like screen out the Ard boys, I guess, and they would they would have had to have moved first, but that's fine. So they're just gonna do this, and then uh, this war chanter is gonna run. So four plus five is nine. So let's go like five and then four. So we're just going to sneak him up just into the melee here. I'm sure that's fine. And then last but not least. So we got to sort of think about where we can get teleported into here now. So it looks like this zone back here is actually, they can actually come in here. But it's kind of a weird spot around this corner, right? So... Um, the brutes are just gonna like the brutes are gonna stay in the back I want them to be within um, within teleport range so that's gonna be relevant too many auras going on boom 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 okay got it um, so I guess the brutes are gonna run so where are they gonna go so six so that's a lot so that's ten inches so we're going to move the Shaman first, just so I get a good sense about where the Brutes can go. And then if they go here, yeah, we're looking pretty zoned out in the back. So the only spot that the Iron Jaw player can get anything is back here. 
and that solves that problem, right? That solves the problem where they, they can't get into the back anymore. But so maybe like this would have been a better position, right? Yeah, Let, let's just do this. We're going to do this. And then if I guess they can mighty destroyer, they can get into Gobby maybe. Would Gobby just have moved all the way back? And he move like, or like here? Sure, whatever. So when, like, I know that because I'm doing this independently, and like I'm obviously playing myself, but this illustrates a really good, like a, it's really important when you're playing to pre-think out your entire army's moves, right? Because it's like, well, I need, like, you know, at the very beginning of the game, like even before you really start your hero phase, you're looking at the board and you're like, okay, well, I need to control one, two more. I need to get a tactic. So what does that mean? So where are my buffs going? Where are my teleports going? And then even before the movement phase, it's like, where's everything moving? Where is everything moving? And then you can sort of do some risk analysis and you can say, well, even if the yard boys go 10 up, they're not touching this objective. So Rippas have to get it. So at this point, I control one, I control two, and I don't control more here, but I plan on taking it so I can control these three. And, uh, yep. So let's, um, so then there's no redeploys, right? Because there's nothing within range. So that looks good. Um, I have nine wall points, which means I have plus, right, I have plus one to run. Yuck, I always forget my plus one to run. I always forget my plus one to run. I'm so bad at this game, which means the Ard Boys do get this objective. So Rippas, actually, you know what? Rippas are probably fine here still. They can just zone out the Ard Boys. No, they're probably terrible there. Um, but you know what? It's fine. And then these guys also ran, so they get to go one more inch forward. And then, oops. And then everybody else also ran. So, like, this guy ran, but I don't think he needs to go anywhere. Wurgog gets to go one forward. These guys get to go one inch forward. We're going to make sure that our ranges are still fine. The Brutes did, too, but they're fine. Everybody's fine. Everybody's fine. Okay, it looks good. So... Uh, there's obviously no shooting, so we're going to charge. So the Gore Gruntas are going to charge with 2d6 on these other Gore Gruntas. So 5. So we're going to charge in this direction here. Um, we're going to do this model by model. So that's 5. And then that's 5. Less than that, right? And then that's 5. Cool. Looks good. Wall point, tick. So that brings me to 10, which is plus one to charge. And there's no other uh, charges going on here. Okay, so the three Gorgrunt has all hit. So on two ups, they deal impact mortals. So three. So uh, that's three damage. And then we'll do the one on the outside, right? Because we're trying to keep the objective. So that's three damage on this Gore Grunta here. And these are all the same. They're the same bloody Gore Gruntas. So I'm just going to give them a green tint so I can differentiate them. Cool. So that's charge. Uh, there's no monstrous rampages of any kind. Um, I didn't generate momentum on him. So I'm going to generate momentum. So he gets two momentum. So let's see. I just need another counter. Does this thing count up? It does. So two momentum on him, which is fine. That's our, that's our average, right? So uh, no monstrous actions, whatever. So combat. So it's just going to be Gore Gruntas. Let's see. So let's roll some Gore Grunta damage. It's funny because I'm not because I'm not playing like at like at a table. <clears throat> I usually have like notes and cards and all kinds of things, right? Okay, so they are plus one damage and they are uh, plus one rend on the on the tusks and hooves. Okay, so I have no command points. Uh, this player, the Iron Just player, is definitely going to all out defense here, right? They're definitely going to all out defense uh, to improve that save. 
So Jagged Gore Hacka, so 369, 10 dice. So no all out attack or anything. So we are threes to hit. That's a good roll. And then we are threes to wound. I guess I didn't check triumph. So five saves at two rend. So the pigs are fours, so I need fives to save with two rend. Okay. So they're gonna take four damage. So one, two, three, four. And then let's get the uh, tusks and hooves. So it's uh, 12 dice. So no all in attack. So we're on threes to hit. And then we are threes to wound. So we are one ren. So we're back to profile at fours. So we'll save two. And so we'll take one more damage. So eight. So it means that we lose a model with three damage uh, left over. Not as much damage as I was hoping. Oh no, they're two damage each. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so we had three before, so it was uh, so it was five. So it's five more. Sorry, I'm just confusing myself. That's better. I was I was gonna say it felt quite light. Where's my iron jaw player? There he is. Felt uh, felt quite light. So that's better. Okay, so the iron jaw player hits back. I think that's right. You'll have to let me know in the comments if I if I messed up my first attack. <laughs> so jagged war hackers. So we have uh, three attacks. We're gonna say it's not the champion. And um, threes to hit. Cool. Uh, threes to wound. Cool, so two Ren, so without all out attack, we're looking at sixes. So it's two damage, because this is not with the plus one damage. Cool, and we're gonna do it on the pig on the outside, and then we have four dice for the tusks and hooves, so we need threes, and then we need threes again. Cool, and then our save is um, unmodified, so it's forest save, okay, so two more. So boom, boom, so we don't lose a pig. Um, at the end of combat phase, we get one more wall point because we have one unit stuck in combat. And, yep, that's it. Yep, yep, yep. There's nothing else. Um, the Iron Jaw player owes me a battle shock. We did lose two pigs, but their bravery is six. So we need not a five or a six. Is it worth spending a command point? You know what? Let's just roll for it. We're feeling risky, so we're fine. Cool, and that ends the turn. So we successfully got one, two more in our tactic, and then we are ready for the Iron Jaws uh, turn one. We're ready for the Iron Jaws turn one. Okay, so Iron Jaws. So we're gonna take Magical Dominance, right? Because we have, there's no unbind within range. So. Pardon me. Sorry, I should have muted myself there. Um, so let's let's think our turn through here. We can use our primals. Um, do we just send pigs straight in? Just to pin? If we send pigs in, we're going to get deleted. Right? Because we have this 12-inch range. So we could try to mess around over here outside of this 12 inch range. We can try to mess around over here. I kind of want to play a slow game with Iron Jaws. I, I don't really want to like just throw everything in. I want to try to like make a gap. Let's try that. Let's try to get through here, right? With a fully buffed up unit of pigs. We'll send in the blue pigs and we'll try to get rid of this and stay out of 12 unless we can move in here after we'll see if we can punch through this screen we need to take this back this looks like a good job for the maw crusher right because we can go um we might actually have difficulty with that well we can move them at the end so we'll probably move things forward so this unit of pigs is going to get teleported 
over here. This unit of brutes is just going to move up. Right, they're just going to try to like shove their way up here a bit slowly and take this objective. This unit of pigs is going to hmm, sit back. I suppose. And ooh, too far. Too far to give him plus one damage. No, is this, this is, um, I think this is a 12 inch range. Yeah, so we can give Violent Fury here. No, we'll probably give Violent Fury. It's, we should really, I mean, I guess it's like whatever. I guess I can fiddle around with this later. Um, size equals 15. Uh, color equals number FF.
Okay, everybody, we are going to be...
Oh great, I've been muted for a while. Oh, fantastic. I wonder how long that's been case. Anyway, sorry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop recording the video. Um, anyway, so I decided at the end of the combat phase I'm not gonna charge in. Um, because if it's my turn next, I can get anywhere I want. And if it's his turn next, I want to stay out of range of Wurgog. So, that's just what I've decided. So nobody owes anybody any battle shock, and uh, we can roll off. So, three for Iron Jaws, and five for Big Wah, so Big Wah goes next. Big Wah does not want to get double turned right here. Yeah, it was a good idea for me to stay out, stay out there. Cool. Looking good. Looking good. Interesting. Okay, so Big Wah's turn. So we got to think out our whole turn here. Yikes. Well, Gobby's running. Right, Gobby's probably going to put himself maybe up here on this train. Interesting. Well, let's start. Let's just start. Oh, there's a thing here for Primal Dice. So, Primal Dice are gone. We lose our buffs. So, that's gone. That's gone. Uh, that's gone. That's gone. These are all still here. And I th think that's all. That's nothing. That's nothing. Okay, looking good. So Big Wah's gonna get some command points, two, and Iron Jaws gets three. Let's roll. So it's D three or it's um, D six plus th plus three. So four, five, six, seven. 
It's such, it's so good. It shouldn't be D6, I feel. So that's 19 wall points. So I charge and I'm on plus one to hit, plus one to wound. Like it's amazing how quick. This is turn two, guys. Right? This is turn two. And I'm already, I'm already like ready to rock and roll. It's great. It's great. Um, I probably pop strategist this turn. Uh, let's roll for some primals. Uh, so Big Wad does not generate a global. Iron Jaws does generate a global. And then Big Wad generates one on their own. Uh, Iron Jaws again are the optimal focus. So we're going to take and give it to the same work, our weird knob. There's nothing to rally. No endless spells. Nothing for the Wurgog to stare at. Heroic action. No one to heal. Do I just want a command point? I'll just try to get a command point. And fail. And then Big Wa or uh, Iron Jaws is going to... Yep, do the same and get it. So we're going to take... Uh, this thing so he just has a command point oops oops my b oh gross <clears throat> this is not looking good for big wa um so those are the heroic actions so i need to think of a battle tactic I need to think about so there's yeah I mean I feel like I need to get into here but I'm not gonna take one two three four five seven I'm not taking this objective with my board position Brutes on, on the Maw Crusher. Yeah, that seems okay. Are they going to be able to deal enough damage to take him out? Probably not. He's got a lot of wounds. This mega boss with destroyer? Because if I can kill him, I can take this. And then I can get one to. I've been ignoring the charge thing, I think, but that's okay. I can take this. Because all I need to do is put a couple feet here. So if I just. Oops, if I just move these guys over. So the question is, which is it? Is it the Mega Boss with Destroyer? Or is it the Brutes? The Brutes can do it. The Mega Boss can do it too. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's see what our spells are. Because if I can pop him off and take this, I can get four objectives, one, two more. And then what's the tactic? Led into the maelstrom. Intimidate the invaders is off the table. Um, Squish to puny gets is no good. Surround and destroy is no good. It's turn two. Is everything going to be within 12? Nope. So, let into the maelstrom? Yeah, sure. Sure. That's, that's doable. Uh... 
Okay. <clears throat> Let into the maelstrom. Okay, so we got our... We're going to go one war channer here. And... What am I going to do about these guys? One war channer there. Okay, I see what I'm going to do. Okay, <clears throat> I got this. <clears throat> I can do it. Oops. Um, no fix and beat targets. So let's start casting. So we're going to start with the, um, we're going to start with Horfrost. This is going to be important. Okay. Mega boss, his attack to rent. Good. Um, hmm. There are six of them. It's only three mortal wounds. Mystic Shield doesn't feel very good. Uh, Gobsprack is going to cast Choking Mist. And I'll throw a Primal at it. So that hap that goes off. So it's just going to be this unit. Minus one attack characteristics. It's Wednesday. Oh, she's so adorable. Okay. Um, Gobsprack is going to cast Ur Sneaky Miasma. Yep. That's no good. I'm going to save the other Primal. Let's try Mystic Shield. Nope. L and then let's try Teleport. Ugh. I'll throw a Primal at it because it'll go off no matter what. Yeah, because I have plus one to cast. I sh I, uh, that's, yeah. <clears throat> so that goes off. So the Mega Boss is getting teleported. Um, outside a nine. Yeah, let's do that. And then we will Mighty Destroyers. So the Mega Boss is going to attempt to charge. So I get plus one, so I need eight on the dice. Nine, so that's ten. On your feet, soldier. Let's see how this works out. <clears throat> I have a feeling it's gonna work out great. I have a feeling it's going to work out great. And um, Mighty Destroyer is also, I can issue it again. So, you know, before he, whatever, he's going to get these guys just to do a move. So they can't go through Ripa's. It should look about like this. Is that what I want to do? No, that's not what I want to do. Yeah, that is what I want to do. Yes, it is. Okay, and I believe that's all for my spells. Yep. So then we're into our move phase. Hmm. Uh, so, I think the Ard Boys are going to have to swing around to block off this group here. But not charge. So, if I were to take this... Four... So they go at least six. Right? Because they get plus one to, to run. 
Okay, so let's start doing that. So how are things gonna move around here? This is a tough spot for Big Wa. So my plan is to control... See, I thought originally that my Ard Boys could get up to here. But they just can't. Uh, actually, they can. This is tough. All I need is two boots on this. How far can these guys get? Not far enough. I feel like my, I haven't been using Rippas very well this game. I feel like they, they were kind of positioned poorly here. So everything can go this way and the Brutes can go this way or the Ard Boys can go down and the Brutes can come up. It's tough. A battle line's got to get stuck in for my tactic. Okay, so it's got to be that. So let's just start moving things. Okay, so the brutes are going that way. These brutes are going to go forward. and Or sorry, these yard boys are going to go forward. These guys are going to go this way. And I think that the these guys are going to come back. So let's start with... So these guys are going to start by going... They're going to run. But they're going to go four. And then they can go eight more. And then they can run. So they can go 13 more inches. Oops. So they're just gonna run down like to here. Just kind of right back to where they started. <laughs> Stand up there. Okay. Cool, more running with plus one. Ooh, so that's uh, 11 inches. So these guys are basically just going to like reform a line like this. Yeah, and they have plus one damage. We don't have to worry about our wall points anymore. Um, Wurgog is going to run so... That's nine inches. He's got to fall back. War Chanter's going to run four. That's 11 inches. So he's just going to fall back, probably to here. War Gog's actually going to stay in the middle. Um, another run. So four plus, oh, geez, that's 11 inches. So I think this guy's actually gonna come over this way. So let's say six and then five. <clears throat> um, brutes are gonna run, so four, that's eight, that's nine inches. I think we gotta do this two at a time. Yeah, right. Tough spot. Uh, those Ard Boys are going to run, so that's nine inches. So. Now oh, they moved already. Right? Yeah, okay. And then Gobby's going to run. So, 18. I don't think this puts him within range. And then the weird knob is going to run too. So, 9 inches. Yeah, alright. <clears throat> so, they're just going to like re kind of castle up a little bit. Cool. Okay. So 
So we got a well point for charging here in the hero in the calm in the hero phase. Um, and that's the only charge on the table. Yeah, we failed our tactic, I think. Oh man, it's brutal. That's gonna be a failed tactic because these hard boys needed to get stuck in. I'm having to take time between my turns because uh, I have to like get up and go do family stuff or whatever. So I'm gonna just take this move back. And what's this charge like? Yeah. So they just so these hard boys just because they can't because then I just fail my tactic and that's that's silly. So these hard boys have to instead they have to just move four inches back and then attempt to charge. You'll have to forgive me, dear viewers. So this is um, let's say seven. So I need six on the dice. Six on the dice. So this guy just gets to go seven inches and just tag in. I'm not even sure how well this is going to work out, but we are going to see. Might not even be very good, but I need it for my tactic. Yeah. Okay, that's a wall point too. Okay, so combat phase. So we're gonna pop destroyer. This is gonna be a big fight right here. It's gonna be a big fight. So we're gonna pop destroyer. <clears throat> so um, we already have plus one damage. So the damage goes to six. And we also have two, um, two ren from Horfrost. So we're looking at five dice I'm oh, sorry we're looking at eight dice we're looking at eight dice twos cool twos bummer so this many saves and we'll all out defense so this many saves at two rend so that's fives nope because uh, he's on a three up save so with all out defense that puts him on twos so fours, he needs fours to save. So only two get through, so that's 12 damage. That's a big, big save rolls. Uh, where is he? I mean, not bad. Uh, and then we fight back. So I think these pigs pile in. It's definitely our turn next, or it's definitely the Iron Jaws turn next. So I don't think they'll be able to really like slap through here. So what are, what's our range here? So one. This range is probably two, four, one, two, three, four. Four are get to gonna get to fight, including the champion, but they are minus one to their attack characteristic. And then they have, yeah, three ren plus one damage, plus one save. Okay, so four of them get to attack. So four times two is eight, is nine. So nine dice. And then are we gonna like all out? attack them or anything we're at the top of the round i think we're we're not going to i don't think that we're going to put a ton of damage through although it is lots of rend we're not going to kill the unit no let's just not let's just not so threes and threes so it's three rend. So the Ard boys have plus one damage, but that's all. So they go from, uh, it's three rend, so they need sixes. 
So they'll fail them all. And they get plus one damage. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Where do I pull from? From the back. So three yard boys go down. And then the tusks and hooves. So four times three is 12. Because they get minus one attack. So threes. And threes. So this is... Oh no, it's not, it wasn't three rend. It was only two rend. It wasn't three rend. It's only two rend. This is three. I'm just going to put an Ardboy back. We're just going to say that. So this is three rend. So this is sixes. Okay. And this is... So what? Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four Ardboys go down. One. Two. Three, four. No smashing and bashing. The yard boys fight back. Yep, yeah, this over here was a bummer. I needed more of these attacks to go through. He had some pretty good saves. Seems good. Did hurt him though quite a bit. Give the fix and beat guy something to do. Although he's on the wrong side. <laughs> Jeez. This game is hard, man. Okay, so what do we got for our boys? So there's only four of them. And the champion. So that's nine. Nine dice. Uh, so threes. Ooh, look at that. And then twos. One, two, three, four, five, six saves at one rend. So the pigs are on fives. So they take two damage. Nope, they take four damage. Just gonna get this guy back. No, they're on fours. They have plus one to save. So it's only two damage. Only one gets through for two damage. Okay, and then the Mega Boss on Mark Crusher. I forgot my monstrous action. Um, Mega Boss on Mark Crusher. So he's got eight dice now. Because he has strength from victory. So he needs threes. And threes again. Cool, and then it's one rend, so uh, the Warwick Mega Boss on foot has a 3-up save. Oh, the Mock Crusher has a 3-up save too. So um, with one rend, he needs uh, fours, and I assume he doesn't have any defensive bonuses. No. So he'll save one, so two go through, and so they are, I believe this guy has plus one damage. Yep, so they're three damage each, so that's six. And then the Mighty Fist and Tail. So that's eight attacks at threes and threes. So this is two rend, so he needs um, fives. Ah, all those saves, he's alive. He's alive. Alive, I say, that's, that's funny. It's not great though. Not looking great for Big Wah. Okay, at the end of combat, I have uh, two units stuck in combat. So still shy to get the uh, the next tactic. Oh, and shield bash. So we're gonna say four are in, in range for shield bash. We need sixes. And then, okay, that's kind of what I figured. Cool. So we're gonna spend a command point to auto pass the the Ard boys, and that's it. So control one, control two, and no tactic. No, we did get our tactic because we're still stuck in combat. 
So we just, we, we're down one point. Control one, control two. Sheesh. This is not looking good for, for Big Wah. <sighs> okay, so Iron Jaws. So what are we thinking here? It's maybe a good time to take um, uh, where we seize the center. That That's our turf now. Um, we could also do surround and destroy relatively easily. I don't even think we need to. I mean, that's our turf now. Seems good. This guy's got to be within three. So this is like 12. So that's nine. So he needs a five run. So he needs to auto run. But I could probably do that. So I'm going to auto run them forward when it's their turn. Right, because he's going to go 4 and then 10, so that'll bring him within range, and that'll bring... The pigs will easily be within range, and if not, the this other war chanter can come up too. So the, this mega boss has 6 wounds on him. And he has 12 wounds on him. So we're going to take... That's our turf now. So command points, so we both take up on command points. Um, primal dice. So the big wall player does not generate a global. Sorry, that's the iron jaw player does not generate a global. The big wall player does not generate a global. And the big wall player <coughs> uh, does generate a private primal. But I still think that we're out of range of each other. Rally? Probably don't need to rally. Right? Yeah, don't need to rally. We do have optimal focus. So we have double buffs there. No endless spells. Heroic action. Heroic recovery? No, you can't because I'm in combat. Can't heroic recovery in combat. So, probably just generate a command point. I don't really feel like I need the plus one to save. No command point. And then what's the big wall player going to do? Probably here we go because we need to get to 24 wall points. So it's the second battle round, so I just need a three up. Nope. No good there. So then that's the so then the battle tactic I said it's gonna be Dat's our turf now. It's not there. Oh, I set this before, but I guess it didn't stick. It's not gonna be here, is it? Okay, well, whatever. I'll just leave it blank. We're going to take that. It's our turf now. Um, good. So we're good. So the war chanters. So these buffs. That's gone. This is still here. That's still there. This is the um, whatever thing. These are all gone. That's still there. That's still there. That's still there. That all looks fine. Are we with outside of 30? We are outside of 30. Match, we've already taken magical dominance, right? Yep. So the war chanter is going to start handing out violent fury. So where should we hand out violent fury? These pigs got to go in, I think. 
while we're at it, let's change this guy's uh, size equals 15. Color equals number F, 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 F. Let's see if that does anything. Sure. So the brutes are out of range. Probably should have checked this before, but that would have been very nice. So the pigs get it, and I guess, yeah, let's do that. So we're going to go plus one damage to uh, these pigs from this guy. And then we're going to go plus one damage to this pig. I think I, I, think I just kind of want to pull the mega boss out of combat. But strength from victory, though. Yeah, I, I want to get strength for victory, so I'm just going to give it to this mega boss instead. And I got them, I got my war chanters backwards because originally the mega boss was over here, so he's not within range to do fix and beat over there, which is fine, I guess. So let's get to spells. So we are outside of thirty. So let's go with, um, and we have optimal focus. So let's start buffing pigs. Let's go uh, Horfrost. So I need eight. I'll throw a primal at it, I guess. So we'll get that and we'll pick the tusks and hooves. So they're going to get Ren three on these guys here. Probably a wad turn for Iron Jaws. Cool. Uh, let's Mystic Shield the same unit of pigs. Cool, plus one save. And then let's teleport something. So that's this guy. So what I could have done, and what I still can do, is I'm gonna teleport this war chanter here so that I can heal this mega boss. So I can still do that. Yeah, because I don't need to teleport anything else. Nothing that's within range. So then on a 3-up, we're going to do Fix and Beat. Cool. So heal this guy D3. One. Tick. Whatever. It's fine. Cool. That's all my spells. Um... But the mega boss is going to spend a command point to mighty destroyers. So I'm going to move these guys forward because they're in the way. And then this guy's going to go. Oh no, not. Yeah, yeah. And then this guy's going to go four. I think he can because he's not. Is he within nine of this, of this guy? He is. <laughs> so he can only attempt a charge. Same thing with these pigs. They can't, uh, they can only attempt to charge because they're within nine of an enemy. So you know what, we're just going to use that command point instead to auto run them later. I was going to maybe do both, but that's fine. So we don't need to mighty destroyers. So a move phase. So these guys are going to go forward nine. And what does that leave them as a charge? He can't move. So then we're going to spend a mighty destroyer point. We're going to auto run. So these guys are going to go 10. This guy can go 10. So there's my tactic. Because these guys are not going to be successful in this charge. But I am... I got three within the middle of the battlefield. So that's cool. Um, these brutes on the right are going to run. So that's six inches. They're just going to keep moving up here. Cool. This guy can't move. Um, he's going to stay right where he is, I suppose. And they're going to stay right, right where they are. So that's that. Mega Boss and Marcrusha is going to shoot. Four dice. Twos. All hits and threes. 
all wounds. So it's one rend, so this guy's got a four up save. Cool, so he's gonna take two and that's gonna take him out. Done. Strength and victory only counts in the, uh, in the combat phase, so he doesn't get strength and victory. Oh well, oh, I forgot to move this guy. This guy's gonna run too. So nine plus five is uh, 14. So he's just gonna run into the middle. This was uh, optimal focus, so we can get rid of that. He's got three wounds on him. All of these were for these pigs. That's pretty neat. It's a nice way to line them up. Um, cool, that's it. So charge. Oops. My notes get all messed up because I swap back and forth. So the, the pigs in the middle are going to charge. I didn't think they'd get in. That's okay. We still haven't called our Iron Jaws Wah. We're still just sitting on it because I haven't felt like we needed it yet. I really feel like it's a good way to turn a tide that is, you know, but it had, nothing's happened yet. Cool. So, uh, charge. Oh, wait. I have get him beat. Oh wait, this was the one that couldn't move. This is the one that's got to move. So he's the one that's got to auto run, right? Yeah, the fix and beat one was the one I teleported. Right, so these guys actually can charge. Let's try this. Let's try this again. So on a three up, nope, done. Get him beat. Not this time. So, combat phase. So, we just have this one fight over here. So, we're going to pile in. So, this guy's going to pile in just forward. But he's going to stay close to them, right? So, this guy's too far. One, two, three, four, five pigs are all going to fight. And they all still have uh, minus one attack characteristic. So Gore Gruntas. So five of them are going to fight, including the champion. So that's 11 attacks. Um, I don't need all out attack. So threes. And threes. So it's two Ren on the Ard Boys. And this is the bottom of the round, and I don't think I'll be using it for anything else, so we will use all-out defense. So then it, they go from three with all-out defense to two, so they need fours to save. Cool, and then these are only one damage each, but it's enough to kill the unit already. It's enough to kill the unit already. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't going to be too difficult to get rid of them. So smashing and bashing, but there's nobody to smash and bash. Um, yep, so at the end of the combat phase, so these blood tooths fought, so they can attempt to charge. 11 inches. Now we're talking. So impact mortals. So there's going to be three on the Wurgog. Let me just make sure that's actually true. Yeah, it doesn't say like when, they just says when they finish a charge move. So two ups, so three impact mortals, uh, four up ward from the Wurgog, all warded off, and then one on the Brute, we're looking for a two up, cool, so it's one wound on one Brute, we're going to throw it to a Brute at the back here. Yeah, this is looking real bad for Big Wa.
And I think that's it. Um, there's no battle shock anywhere. I feel like I have command points left over here, but I don't know what I would have used them for. Didn't feel like there's anything of value. Okay, so we control one, two, three, four. Do we control this one in the middle yet? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, no. But we do control four. So, we control one, two more. And our tactic was uh, whatever. Uh, take our take. That's our turf now. Cool. Roll off Big Wah. And then Iron Jaws. So, it's Big Wah's turn next. At the, to at, for th at the top of three. Okay. I don't think there's anything I can do. I need to get one, two more, but I'm pinned. So they could make it, this guy can go, this guy can make it 14 inches if I use all the command points. But I don't think it's enough for me to get enough feet on that objective. Maybe. No, because I'm, I'm going around this piece of terrain. So the question is, can, he, can this guy get there? So let's say that's like three. And so he can go 11 more. Yeah, I'm going to be just shy. Because I need to get five on. So this guy in the back, he's gonna, he can go 14. Okay, so I could probably just run up and grab this so I can control one, two, three, and then teleport Gobby onto the back for four. And then what's my tactic going to be? Can't do Intimidate. Can't do Wait For It, lads. Can't do Squish to Puny, lads. Surround and Destroy is no good. Retreat to Charge to. I can retreat a lot. They're all stuck in. But I don't think I can charge to. This is gone. I don't think I can charge to. Like Gobby can charge. But God, he has so much still. Gobby can charge. Swar Chanter could charge. I mean, I can still get the points. Okay, let's try. So, uh, Big Wah gets two command points. And uh, Iron Jaws get three. Primals are gone. Let's generate our wall points. I don't want to generate a lot of wall points here. So, it's still uh, D6 plus three. So, four. I want to keep it. Not very many more wall points, um, but uh, it's gonna it's gonna get me. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up too high. Um, optimal focus is the same on this uh, weird knob. 
I'm just going to keep that. The Mystic Shield is good. Right, we can still do Horfrost Mystic Shield Teleport, which is fine, but probably won't need to do that. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. At this point, we're just kind of cruising. The Wargog Prophet's going to stare, though. We need a big stare. We need a big stare. Okay, so... So, they take... One. Let's do it again. They take... Two. They take... One. So far, so good. This is the, on the pigs. I take... Two. Warded. Warded. Good. They take... Three. Let's keep it going, man. Yes. They take three. Two pigs dead. I take five. So Wurgog takes three. They take two. They take one. Hey, as long as they're taking it. They take three. <laughs> I take one. Yep, okay. They take th uh, two. They take one. I take four. So I take one, they take two, oh my god, am I going to just wergog wor this? No, I take five, so I take two more, and that's it, I'm dead. Worth it. So they take 21, so they have 23. So it's going to be, so I'm just going to do this. So I still three more pigs die. So like one, two, three, and then three more wounds are left. Wergog Prophet. Wergog Prophet, yo, making it happen. Making it happen. It's a lot of pigs to go down. The brutes are gonna have to trade really well. I needed this mega boss on Makrasha to die back there. I know it says Gordrak, but it's it's not. Okay, let's see. Uh, heroic action for Big Wa. Um, I think I just want a command point. So let's try to get that. Nope. For Iron Jaws. Probably just command point two. Okay, we'll get it. Give it to the Mega Boss of Crusher. Cool. We're going to give plus one damage to these Brutes. And to Gobsbrack. Because so I can give it to anybody, right? I'm just going to make sure. Auric War Chanter. Because it doesn't have to be Iron Jaws, I think, right? No, it says Iron Jaws unit. So. Which War Chanter is that? Healing? Healing Beat? these guys okay let's get into some spells uh, gobsprack will start with choking mist and get it with a seven so I think we're just gonna hit all these guys that seems fine 
And then Gobsprack's gonna do what? Just Mystic Shield, actually. On the Brutes. Are we within 30? Oh, we are. Um, so, what was my casting roll? It, was, it wasn't very high. So we're gonna say Choking Mist is Unbound. Definitely want to get rid of that spell. Mystic Shield is whatever. I know that there's better spells coming up. So no plus one save. Um, so what do I got left? Just the teleport. With an eight. Oh, we didn't generate primals. So let's do that first. So global for big Y, yep. Global for Iron Jaw, nope. Private for big Y, yep. So I think that was a one and a six for the teleport. So we'll throw a primal at it. Oh my God, it's a one and a six. That was a five. And we'll throw one more at it. I really wanna make sure this goes off. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, yeah, so we'll throw our second unbind. And that's not going to go even with primals. So we'll save that primal. So the teleport goes off. He can't teleport himself. I'm gonna put Gobby back here. To take this objective. Seems reasonable. And then any reason to Mighty Destroyer? These guys are already stuck in. Oh yeah, I have to Mighty Destroyer. So I'm gonna Mighty Destroyer these Ard Boys forward. I think I can, right? They're not within. I think they have to charge. That screws up my plan. That is such a difficult rule sometimes. Yeah, you must, if this unit receives a command within 12 inches of an enemy unit and more than three, you must attempt to charge. So these guys can't, because they're 11 inches away, do anything but charge. So that means the max that he, they can move is 10, which means they can't take that objective. So I can get three, but I can't get more. which means the plan changes a little bit. Okay, so then move face. So these art boys are going to just run. No one's gonna engage them this turn. They're just gonna sit here. Nobody wants to fight them because they have plus one damage. This guy's just going to move up. Um, this guy's going to retreat if he can. Yep. This guy's going to retreat. Cool. Rippers are going to stay right where they are. Yeah, they're just going to zone out that back line. Those guys are already stuck in combat. What was my tactic again?
Retreat two, charge two. Ugh. So Gob can't go there. Gob's got to go here. Nine away. And then what's the second one charging? I assumed these guys could charge, but they can't. They're still stuck in. This guy, there's no way he's going to get within range to charge. I'm going to fail this tactic too. Tough spot. Ripas, I guess, could go 12. And they can attempt to charge. For the tactic. It's going to be tough. So that's move. No shooting. Gobsprack needs a 9 inch charge. Plus one on the dice. 8 inches isn't enough. Spend a command point. Reroll that. Even worse. Done. Ripa's is going to charge. No, they're not even going to charge because now they don't need to. Okay. Um. Okay, so I think I'm just going to talk the rest of this game out because I think it's done. So Big Wa is going to get Control 1, Control 2. Um, the Brutes are going to come in and finish off the Pigs. And that's going to be the end of their turn. And then after that, it is definitely the Iron Jaws turn. And so they're going to pick... One, two, three, four, five. Let into the maelstrom snow good. That's gonna be their tactic. Have they done let into the maelstrom? I don't think they have, have they? Nope. Let into the maelstrom is a pretty easy one. Because the pigs are battle line. So the pigs are going to go like... Unbuffed. Right? Into this unit. Because this all these buffs are gone. And so I'm just not going to buff them. Because at this point, like I'm confident in winning. I'm just going to secure my tactics. So the pigs are going to go into there like this. The brutes are just going to sit on this objective. I control all these. Um, and then, yeah. I had to be nine outside. This pig's just going to get out of the way. So that's a five inch charge. So I saw five and a half. So that happens. I haven't popped destroyer yet. So that happens. Get in there. Um, so I have a battle line. This isn't, they're not going to wipe these, these guys out. I'm going to make sure of that. I don't even have to fight with all of them or pile in. Like all I need to do is make sure that they're stuck in. So I just got to get a few stuck in and then pull up from the back. Right, and then I'm gonna get my my five points there. And then that's gonna be pretty much, that's gonna be the game, right? Like some brutes are gonna die. And, uh, and then we roll off again. So the blue is for Big Wa. So the tie goes to Big Wa. So Big Wa is gonna get to go again, but still. Probably get their tactic this time. Because I think it'll be uh, whatever it is. So it'll be like control one. And then what? The yard boys are going to like move around a little bit. Like there's nowhere for them really to go. Yep. And I think that's going to be the game. So Iron Jaws. Iron Jaws win. So what's like the recap here? 
Like, what's the story of this game? What's the story of this game? Who did well? Maybe trading pigs early, but that doesn't feel like it was that effective. Like, Big Wah on this side threw the pigs at the other pigs and traded them. He did bring out the Mega Boss into this position. So that was a way of exposing him. I feel like if the Mega Boss on foot had killed the Maw Crusher, because I was kind of ex was kind of expecting him to. He only had two rend, right? But that could have been better. Still, it was two rend. And he was on twos and twos and two rend with eight attacks and six damage. Like he needed three to go through and only two went through. So out of eight attacks, only two went through with twos and twos and two damage. So that was a big, that was a big moment. Because if I could have killed him, it would have been a big turn. It would have been the objective. It would have been a five point turn instead of a four, four point turn. Yeah, I felt like my movement with the Ard Boys was really awkward for the big wasp side. Like I felt like they were, they weren't in the right position ever. I feel like I should have just deployed them more forward. I feel like deploying super far back was a little bit of a mistake. I should, because like, I deployed really far back. And I feel like if I deployed further forward, that like the, the pigs could have come in if they wanted to, but I would have just been like, well, I'm really, I really like, I'm gonna like, you know, mystic shield them and I'll defense them. Right, so even if they have like good rend, it's like, I'll still be there. And then I'm gonna slap them back. So I feel like deploying super far back was a bit of was a was a mistake in the deployment section. These brutes didn't have to do anything. Yep, Wargog did good. Big Wad teleports were fine. Pigs for pigs. I don't know. Maybe I should have just teleported the brutes up to a position like up here. Like maybe I should have just teleported the brutes to like somewhere like this. And then the Ard Boy should have been positioned more forward. And then I should have just zoned out my backline. Ripas didn't really do anything. They zoned out, right? And I guess that's their that's their their purpose. But I'm I'm almost feeling like Hobgrotz would do a better job of zoning out. They're fast, but I didn't need their speed this game. And how about from the Iron Jaws side? I mean, buffing pigs and sending them in is good. I feel like I was a little bit lacking in the back line. I feel like that 170 points for the third unit of pigs could probably be something else. Just something a little bit more like just backline screeny. Like even just like some uh, grots or whatever. Could be, it might be better. My war chanter movement was, was, was strange. Like it, they sort of crisscrossed over. But that's okay. Yep, very interesting game. I'm going to try... Um, so, like, right now I'm sort of playing four different armies and four different lists. Big Wah, Cruel Boys, Iron Jaws, and Giths. So I think I'm going to try... So that's one, two, three, four, five, six different matchups. I think over the next, like, few weeks I'm going to try to do all of them. So let me know if this is something that you're interested in. Let me know if this was if this was interesting. Um, and thanks to all my patrons. So let's bring up that patron page again. Because I'm just such a fan. Yeah, thanks to my patrons. And Wybarian for the art for the channel. Yep, if you come if you become a patron, you win every argument. So like, subscribe, and wah.